Welcome back to Inside Out, and with us today are authors Ariel Eckstedt and David Sterry, authors of the book I hold in my hand, Putting Your Passion into Print, which is uh, a popular idea and uh, a viable thing to execute <laughs> if you just know how to do it, and this book tells you how. Let's talk a little bit, since I promised it in the first segment, let's talk a little bit about the proposal itself and we're, we're yeah. still going with Bob and his nonfiction work sure. of wonder and uh, what are the components of a proposal okay. proper? So let, let's start with the summary okay. and again this is like the flaps of a hardcover book and the best way of learning how to write a summary is to start reading book flaps in a bookstore and in the category of book in which you're writing. So say Bob is writing a history book. He wants to trot right over to that history section and start reading it like crazy and writing down words that he finds that apply to his book as well because then there will be a professional quality to the summary that he might not have without having, those, uh, having that kind of research. Okay, now I, I want to make sure I understand that. So if, for instance, uh, you see, I heard you earlier say something about a coming of age tale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that language, is that it's a good thing to repeat that language yeah. or not? I, I think that in general uh, it is good to have the, the kind of same kind of pitch that publishers use because they're familiar with it. If it's hackneyed then you can you know, th then you can come upon some problems with that. But a lot of times, um, like as an agent, I write pitch letters for each project that I take on. And I go to, you know, Amazon, I look at the <laughs> copy myself, and I pull out certain adjectives that I find that are really, a lot of people are experts at this who work in publishing houses, so you can borrow great material from them. Right. Right. And do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I was going to say the next part of the, your proposal is uh, your bio. And um, people make the mistake oftentimes of writing a very dry, dull, boring bios. It's not like a job resume. This is something that has to be fun. It has to be, it's, it, well, it also depends on what kind of book Bob is writing. If he's writing a humor book, he should write a humorous uh, bio. Um, and a, a lot of times we find that people don't acknowledge their own accomplishments. They don't even see what they've done. Um, we were talking to someone, a woman, who's writing a, a book and she was having trouble with her bio, and uh, we said, well, what, what have you done? She said, well, nothing, basically. If you're in your 40s, you must have done something. No, she said, I haven't really done anything. You know, I've, uh, I had 10 kids, so I didn't really have time to do anything. And we're like, wait, wait a second, you had 10 kids? That's an enormous accomplishment. I think if people really look at their own lives in a new way, and also it's, it's uh, it's a good idea to get someone to help you do this, to sort of draw out, what did you do in your 20s? What did you do in your teens? Uh, and it's amazing how many times I've worked with writers, and by the time we get done, they look at their bio and they go, wow, I really have <laughs> led a cool life, haven't I? And they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not like a resume either, so you can include odd, interesting things about your life. Uh, we had a man in a workshop who it turned out had been homeless for several years. So in a job resume, obviously you wouldn't put from 1993 to 1996 homeless. However, in a bio, that might be something interesting to put in because you can just imagine Oprah introducing this man and saying, and he was homeless for three years right. and now he's come out on the other side, et cetera, et cetera. So those kinds of things can be, uh, you know, really make someone take notice. And if, and if they are tangential to the, the topic of the book, that's still cool. Absolutely. That's right. If it's interesting, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, what about bio elements that uh, are important things to know about the writer that lend yeah. a, an air of credibility or validity yeah. or expertise? So particularly if you've been published before, you absolutely want to get those, uh, the bio. So maybe you've written an article for a local newspaper. Um, maybe you've gotten a poem published in a journal. Whatever it is to show that you've actually made the effort to get your work published and been recognized in some front or another. Okay. All right, so you've got, um, you know, you've got essentially summary, summary bio. bio, and then? The competition. This is an important part of the process because a publisher wants to know when they're buying a book, they want to know that you've done your research and you, you understand what else is out there. Uh, and the idea of the competition section of a proposal is that you list f five to ten books 
that are similar to yours but different and it's your job to associate yourself and these all have to be successful titles in the same sort of with the same general idea as your book so that you associate yourself with titles that have been successful and then you illustrate how your book is different the whole idea is to find a hole in the market where you know there's a bunch of people who are interested and demonstrate that another book isn't out there and yours is going to attract the audience of these similar books. Right. Now, is, is that true for fiction as well? No. So for fiction, you need a bio, and the same rules apply as the bio that we talked about. And some people, particularly for genre fiction, like to include a summary as well, like we talked about. But the competition and also the audience section and the special marketing and promotional opportunities, which we'll go to, get to momentarily, those do not get included in a fiction uh, with a manuscript. However, if you have ideas about these things that you think are important, which you think also separate you from the crowd of other fiction writers, then by all means, it's still great to put them down and let an agent or publisher know that you're thinking about these different areas of the marketplace. Right. So let's say a mystery writer is setting something in the world of silent cinema and knows there's mm. 50 silent screen film festivals. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's, 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 that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, publishing these days is so much, as you uh, alluded to earlier, about the publicity and marketing of your book. So with fiction, it's very hard to get the public to know about and read your work. If you as the author are thinking about ways to get your readership, it's going to make the publisher very happy. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say would be some major mistakes you see in proposals frequently? Is it, is it mostly people just haven't done the research? Or? Yeah, but it's also people send out work that's not ready to be sent out, and they also don't go over their work with a fine-tooth comb. Ariel gets a, um, queries every day uh, marked to Arlelu Hepstut, uh, Ariel Hupstick. Like they don't even spell her name right. Well, you know where those things go? They go in the trash. People just don't, they're not meticulous enough before they send something out. We see that over and over again. Yeah. Right. Well, and actually, that's probably a fairly good litmus test for what the work might be. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even like the quality of the paper that people yeah. put something on, you know, how much do you value your work? Um, and all the little details that co come with that, we notice because we're getting so many manuscripts. If something looks special, then we take notice of it. Right. Okay. Well, now you alluded earlier to uh, the proposal having this, this beefed up outline that's yeah. written in the voice, yes. essentially. Is there a, a an accepted format for all of this to to arrive to you, or are there yeah. a whole host of possible uh, Certainly ways? anyone can break the rules, but we really encourage people to know the rules before they break them, if they're going to break them in some creative way. And in our book, not only do we have sample proposals so that people can see what they actually look like and model their own proposals after them, but there's very detailed instruction about each of these pieces. Um, you know, one of the sections we didn't talk about was the audience section. So we talk about imagining who this audience is and give many examples, like does your audience read O Magazine or Cosmo? Do they listen to NPR or Howard Stern? Really getting a picture of who these people are. 